Hello there. Quick, think of your favorite classical historic movie. If you said anything other than Lawrence of Arabia, you were wrong. It's not only brilliant, but also an awesome look at the Arab revolt and a much ignored front from World War I. But I've often wondered, what about the other side? What about the actual Ottoman Empire that were fighting the British in Arabia? Could the Ottomans have won against the British? I want to find out. So that's why I'm back on the Great War Redux mod in Hoi 4 with the sick men of Europe, the Ottoman Empire. Not only that though, I want to see the real historical Ottomans' chances. So I will only be using historical division design in organizations that the Ottoman Empire actually used to see if they were any good, all based on far too much research. I make plenty of these historical organization videos, so if you'd like more historicity, you should subscribe to help me hit my silly 50k subscriber goal, where I'll be doing a massive project filled with all of the silliest challenges from my community in one mega video. Please send help. Okay, here we are, the Ottoman Empire. We look very big, so it seems like we should be very strong. We do unfortunately have some massively terrible national spirits. Oh my god, army of a bygone era, what is this? We have a very big focus tree with a variety of little alt history paths. We're going to be making sure to go the historical option wherever possible. And just like the real Ottomans, a whole mess of minority troubles. We're going to be looking at this list a lot. We also have a huge amount of debt. That's right, we owe money everywhere, and we have to pay consumer goods if we don't pay it down but we're going to be getting even more debt because that's the only way I can make equipment. My factories do nothing. We start with quite a lot of different division designs, some of them historical, some of them not so much, but we'll look at them again later when we go to make our historical divisions, which is really soon because we got Balkan Wars coming. For starters, just a bunch of pretty typical research. We also have basically no factories whatsoever, so we're not going to be making much equipment. Instead, we're going to be buying. Straight away, we get some revolts in Albania, just everyone being all pissy. All we have to do is basically have forces in Albania and we can defeat it. Ah, good old Ferdinand up in the airplane, the first event. To celebrate, we're going to start paying off some of our debt to try and get some consumer goods back so I can actually build some things. And I guess I just want to be going down the eco tree a little bit, investing, and just trying to generally make my economy less terrible. I can also sell oil concessions over certain territories to the British. I get some debt repayments, but I lose the resource rights. I got to be kind of careful which ones I take, though. We also have a rebellion in Isir, which is not great. And also we can buy some dreadnoughts from the German Empire. I'm sure this won't cause any diplomatic tensions whatsoever and thrust us into a conflict we're ill-prepared for. There are just so many little things to do in these little decision trees, the Ottomans. I I can make a truce with a seer, pay off debt and buy all kinds of different equipment from infantry equipment and support to, I think, trucks and howitzers and stuff. I'm going to try and focus on German, though. I don't want to give anything to the British. I don't know if they actually get anything, but screw you, British. I hate you. It's also the Albanian revolt of 1911, so we just keep sending in the army. Please stop rebelling against me. The Albanian thing has finally come to a head. We can do the Greki memorandum or we can, like, make them independent and give them all of our territories north of Greece. I'll just I'll just do the historical option. Basically, just ignore them. We're so great. Oh boy, that lovely little sign up there says that Italy is justifying on us. They want that spicy Libya, which means since we're going into combat, I need to make the first design. I know, look how early it is in the video. That's because I do actually have some sources for the early changes in the Ottoman Empire for 1911 for the invasion of Libya. It was all based on a German military commission, and it was put forward in 1910 late-ish, but didn't get implemented until 1911. It reformed the infantry design from a square to a triangle division, which means three regiments, and it went down the regiment size to only three battalions. So theoretically, that should actually be nine battalions here. But for starters, there was also an additional kind of Jaeger battalion that was like sharpshooters, which is an odd concept. And we also have a listed amount of manpower within the core, which is based on three infantry divisions. This is being 41,000 men which means that each infantry division was somewhere around about 13,000 men. So that's kind of what I'm going to be basing it on. The artillery regiment that was assigned to each division, because previously there was like a specialized artillery division, but the regiment had two artillery battalions in them, which totaled to 24 pieces of artillery. This is obviously a bit of a problem because the mod makes one battalion 36 pieces of artillery. So I can either get rid of it and go down to only support artillery and only have 12, or keep it as it is. I'm going to keep it as it is because there's going to be another change in just one year. And I think this is relatively accurate, at least to the listed strength. I am also going to remove uh, one or two infantry battalions from the design to make the manpower a little bit more accurate to the 13,000-ish amount. So there you go. The 1911 Ottoman Infantry Division. Okay, yeah, the Italians have attacked us and they are indeed invading Libya. And our officers are protesting our war decisions. Like, we get a choice 
giving us a bunch of malices. Thanks, that's just, it's just super. They are, oh, they're instantly landing in our ports. Uh, I do actually have some troops ready to try to fight them off, but I don't know. I don't know if I, I can do that. I don't think I can win this, but I'm gonna try. Also, the Assyr revolt has popped out as a tiny little country, and I can ratify the Treaty of Dan and have to put down a bunch of minorities. Very Ottoman. Oh boy. We'll put some forces on that border as well to see if we can try and push them out. Oh god, don't take Gallipoli so soon. No, but I don't know what I can do about Libya itself because they are pouring into me right now. Okay, I can surrender though because they have taken a little bit of territory so I can just sort of give up and let them have Libya. Uh, I think that might be a smart move here because we're getting destroyed. Yeah, here you go. Treaty of Uchi, they can just have it. It does create a weird Senusia and I lose Libya, but that's that's fine. Well, glad that's over. I'm sure all the little Balkan countries won't look at my massive recent failure and take advantage of the situation and attack me, right? It's almost 1912. I think it's time to start pivoting to military factories. Also, why not have some elections? Yeah, democracy in the Ottoman Empire. I'm sure it'll be fine. After all, I love democracy. Oh, I just got a ton of PP, and it means I can get rid of early Moby and go to partial Moby. I just have to get rid of etatism. And to get rid of that, I just have to click this little button here and have 180 days of pain. Let's go. Fix our economy. Okay, senior officers have cooed us, changing our government again. I feel like in this game, my government changes every time I look back at the screen. And now we're fighting Ikeria, a bunch of islands in the Aegean Sea? It's, this is just confusing. I'll just naval invade them and try and push them back. It feels like we have constant problems. I also still cannot get rid of this. Seer. I am unable to defeat them. This is painful. Hmm, a bunch of Greek soldiers just moved right up to our border. I'm sure this won't be a problem. And there it is. Balkan League, baby. It's Bulgaria being mean, so let's get our forces on the border. We're gonna be attacked by basically everybody in the Balkans, and it's it's not gonna be good. Oh, dear God. G army in chaos and massive penalties to the Harabelia officers. This is the mod basically saying, you will lose this. Screw you. So we're being attacked basically everywhere that exists in the Balkans. Oh my god. Okay, so I really need to pull back. I'm gonna be frantically trying to buy new equipment from like Germany and Britain. Oh, and a government collapse. Okay, so my government has actually collapsed as a result of this. This is not good, but I believe it leads to our final political form with the raid on the Sublime Porta. And there's like two decisions now, and they'll time out on their own. I think the historical one is to raid on the Sublime Porta. Uh, that just means like government is the same thing as saying Whitehall in Britain. We are trying to hold against the Bulgarians, but it's just red bubbles as far as the eye can see. And the Greeks are pushing us. This is much worse than I expected way worse. I'm going to do some fallback lines now along Greece. I guess, I don't know, just try to defend Macedonia. This is bad. All right, there's the raid in the Sublime Porte. We've changed our government again. Honestly, let's just peace out. Look how much we've lost here. We're going to offer the peace and we've lost all of the Balkans. Oh joy, that's just amazing. We're going to need to pull back all of our forces now after the London Conference that basically just ends the conflict. Oh man, that was bad. Like, really, really uncomfortable fight. I did not expect to lose so badly. Don't worry though, it's second Balkan war time, baby! Basically, Bulgaria got pissed, they didn't get more territory, so they just attacked everybody. So why not join in? Let's freaking go. I also need to remember to always be clicking army modernization every time I get the XP, because this will very slowly fix my military 2% at a time. Okay, there we go. Now I can intervene, just takes a little while. Russia's not happy about it, but I don't care. We're just gonna crush into Bulgaria and try to do anything. We just want to take part, try and reclaim some lands. Look at that, beautiful pushes, but then it instantly white pieces and kicks us out. Okay, thanks a lot. We get the Treaty of Sophia, and I guess we just don't get to play. And they also have offered surrender, even though they've already been defeated. All right, that is weird. Britain has asked for no war in the Gulf. Like, please stop doing the fighty things. Sure, sure. And the Treaty of Constantinople officially ends it, and that's it. Uh, well, <laughs> we didn't really get much there, but we got revenge. I think we won the moral victory. That's what matters. Oh, wow, the focus tree is actually kind of strong. I can get a bunch of recruitable pot through it. That's really good. I don't ever need to leave limited conscription. Let's go. Ooh, and there's a Turkish tank focus. The Turks never had tanks historically, so none for me. But I do wonder what it would be like to be in a tank. Grandpa, Grandpa, skipping no cap for real, for real. Tell him about your time in the war. What's that, Billy? Yeah, Grandpa, no cap, for real, for real. I want to know what it was like to fight in a tank. Oh, God. You don't want to do that. Oh, God, sir, the tea make is broken. We're not going to have any tea. Our 11 is is ruined. Oh, come on, Grandpa. Skibbity, no cap, for real, for real. I want to know what it was like to fight in a real crusader tank. Skibbity. Uh, Giat. 
No, Billy, it's not like how you're imagining it. Why don't you instead play World of Tanks, the sponsor of this video? Oh boy, World of Tanks? No cap? World of Tanks is a free-to-play tank multiplayer game, and the perfect place to go satisfy your tank cravings. Boasting a huge tank arsenal filled with literally every kind of historical tank you can imagine, you can take your favorite tanks into massive battles against other players. With a beautiful blend of historical battles and intense, quick-to-get-in action, World of Tanks is just brilliant. Best of all, if you use my link in the description and invite code COMBAT as a new player, you'll get a free premium Cromwell B tank, 250k credits in 7 days premium access. And if you're coming back and haven't played for 30 days, you can get 3 days free premium, a new camo, and a 7 day rental of a premium Centurion Mark V. Make sure to register using my link below, and thank you to World of Tanks for sponsoring this video. <sighs> Finally! It's over. <laughs> But even more importantly, it is now January 1914, so we can actually make our final design for World War One. There will be more designs later, but this is going to be the big boy. Right, so I've had a hell of a time trying to find Ottoman sources. They are disparate and confusing. But I have found some really cool things, including a published thesis from the Naval Postgraduate School that actually does talk about the changes to the Ottoman military in the wake of a German military commission to try to help them reform their army. The manpower stays about the same, but the key change that occurred after the Balkan Wars in the lead up to World War I is the amount of artillery was reduced. Though my sources do specify a number of different artillery battalions per division, the actual number of guns per division was only now about 16, which is very, very few pieces of artillery compared to the other powers of the Great War. And the best way to represent this is to actually just remove the artillery battalion entirely and replace it with just the support artillery. This, as I'm sure you can imagine, makes it for a truly terrible infantry division for this mod. It's very, very bad. It gets a little bit better in a while, but not, not that much better. We also have a variety of other templates, but unfortunately the sources for many of these are very limited. For example, the irregular cavalry Hamidiyah Alir, I can't pronounce that. These guys represent the sort of informal irregular Kurdish militia that was used to help help put down various problems in Eastern Anatolia. I actually can't change this template and it doesn't matter anyway because they were actually replaced with a more specific cavalry design, though the sources for that are again extremely dubious. I found some information about the different cavalry formations like dress and like their ethnicity which was mainly Kurds and rural Ottomans but basically dick all about their actual organization. I think the one that we have started with is pretty accurate, about four regiments per division, and it did have at least some artillery remnants. So I'm going to give them support artillery, as well as a recon support company. And that's it. They're basically going to be useless, but I think this is a decent mobile reserve if I need it. We also do have an interesting little camel division template. Now, the problem here is that from my sources that I can find, there were no independent camel divisions. It's just that cavalry regiments just had bits of them that were camels if they were assigned to deserty areas. So I'm basically just going to replicate the cavalry template and make it camels and use those only in Arabia. And basically that's it in the lead up to World War I. There is some more designs later on, but now we just have to prepare and buy more equipment. There's also an entire minigame of balance of power that I have not even looked at a little bit, and it's about the different balances between the army and the civilians, but it's been oscillating back and forth with all the political changes, so I, 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 I don't know. I'm just going to keep trying to reform the army and figure out how on earth I'm going to survive. I've also just realized there is truly zero rail connection in eastern Anatolia. I need to massively revamp my rail network or I'm not going to have any supply against Russia. Now, before I click all of these focuses here, please remember that I'm being as historical as possible, which means that I have to persecute all the minorities in my country and do absolutely awful things, okay? I love you Greeks, I love you all the various minorities in Ottoman Empire, but I am bound by history. I'm sorry. It's also like June, I think it's time we start building some serious fort lines along Russia, along the British border in Egypt, along whatever the crap is going on in the south against the British Raj-owned bit of that southern tip of Arabia, I have no idea. And starting to assign some forces, I've got my armies split up all along the lines here. Russia's where I'm really scared, because I have very, very poor supply, so they might just push me and eat me to death, and I'm constantly buying new equipment, and there it is, the Franz Ferdinand assassination. Oh god. But we also have to spend a bunch of command power and get rid of all the... Oh no, oh no, it's suppression. It's suppression of the Greeks. <laughs> I don't like clicking these buttons. Please forgive me. All right, the Great War has begun. I'm obviously not involved. I'm just going to have to wait a bit, but I'm not quite sure exactly when I join. 
Hey, we can also get those German battleships just in time. Thank you. Yes, please. Give them to me. However, they've been pursued. The Brits are pursuing them. This could be dangerous, it says. But hey, it's the historical option. Well, Belgium is done, so the Germans are pushing very heavily into France. And I have now realized a small mistake. To be able to join the war, I need to complete the focus, the Ottoman-German Alliance. But to be able to do that, I have to have a certain number of focuses completed, and including having removed the sick man of Europe, which means I need to have a couple of these focuses completed as well. And I haven't done that, so it's going to be a little bit of a late joining for me. But it's okay, I have a lot of XP from saving up, which means I can actually get some damn doctrine, including the most important doctrine in the game, trench warfare, giving me 20 max entrenchment. I probably would have exploded and died if I didn't have this. Oh, Black Sea Raid is going to happen in like 48 days. That's the thing that puts us at the war. Oh, when we attack Russia and we actually join the war. Okay, I guess I don't have to have all those focuses completed. Maybe I just need to have started them? I'm not sure. I'm still joining a bit too late, but hey, I'm going to be a part of it. Let's go. Okay, let's start gearing up. Make sure everyone's completely ready. I, I don't really understand what just happened. But we'll finish building our forts. We got all of our plans together. Let's freaking go. There's the Black Sea Raid where we basically blow up a bunch of Russian ships. And now it's all about trying to do anything. The Russians are obviously going to hit us pretty heavy. All right, let's go. The wars have begun. There's a bunch of empty UK territory south of Persia. I'm just going to nab for myself. And the attacks have kicked off. You know, it could be worse. It could be worse. The Brits are just not really doing anything. The Ruskies are hitting us pretty heavily. I unfortunately am not able to call in any of my Arabian buddies. They're just not helping me in the war, even though they're like my puppets. But okay, I'm gonna try and push in the south and just take as much territory as I can. We want to participate in this, okay? And we want to drag down as many British forces as possible. We're also going to be trying to army modernize as much as possible. And we can invoke the Senussia Alliance, which is this weird power south of Libya. They're going to explode and die, but hey, it'll be a distraction. <laughs> you en you enjoy yourself. I imagine the Schleifen plan bonuses are going to be running out soon for the Germans, but they're doing really well on the eastern front, pushing towards Warsaw. Serbia is starting to fall apart. I'm just hoping that I can get involved slightly. I'm going to send a few divisions to help out in Serbia, because that would free up a lot of Austrian boys. Oh my god, we are actually helping in Serbia. We're pushing in. We are involved. We're not useless. Okay, and we immediately lose a bunch of ships, part of our navy. Okay, our navy's no good. Uh, oh god. Oh, what? The British just instantly take Basra. What is going on? No, they can't just take that for free. It's okay. I've got boys nearby. I can just kind of rectify that and rush over there. But that's that's such a douche move. What the hell? Why did they just get that for free? We can also get the arrival of the Yildirin Army Corps. These guys with a bunch of lightning symbols. Very fitting, because Yildirin means lightning. It would appear that I've done this a bit too early. These guys represent Army Group F, which was an Ottoman army that fought against the British in the Sinai Peninsula. But it actually was a sort of German-supported unit, and it actually contained the German Asia Corps. I have found basically no sources for what their actual organization is. But, I mean, this is relatively correct, I think, because it, it was a smaller division they were more like individualized regiments with artillery support, so like 10k seems reasonable. Interestingly, they have a logistics company as well. But I will be historical and keep them in the Sinai region to fight against the British. Okay, the Germans have once again been halted on France, that's about it. And the Russian front's sort of stalling as well, as is my Russian front. But Serbia is beginning to collapse, which should mean that more Austrian forces can move to Russia. And, you know, we will have actually done something, which is very nice. Oh, to fit in with the Yildirins, the Asian Corps has arrived. These guys were technically part of the Yildirin army group, but okay. That's kind of weird. These are meant to represent actual German forces that have come to help the Ottomans in the desert. Funnily enough, the design is actually accurate. It would appear that the German Asia Corps was actually just like two regiments, which it would be six total battalions with some support artillery, recon, and engineer. This is accurate. This is so cool. I mean, the design is basically useless and it's given me too many. But hey, historicity is always appreciated. And apparently some of them are Bosnian and Croatian as well, which is very weird. I will group them all together with the Yildirin boys, and I will just keep them in the desert as they took part in historically. You know what? We're doing so well. Let's actually do an offensive. Let's engage the battle plans. I want to push into Sinai. Okay, Australia is naval invading us right near our capital. Thank goodness I left some port garrisons. Ooh, okay, this is what I was waiting for. Persian gendarmerie. Persia's sort of split apart a little bit, so Russia's now going to gobble up into Persia which means that the Russian border is going to massively overextend. So we need to have as many forces as possible here to counter this, because otherwise Russia will just spill into our borders. We're also getting a variety of small malices in various minority states that gives us really tiny little bad things, but it's not a big deal. We're just going to 
to ignore that somewhat. And the Russian border is weak as hell because they're too busy trying to push into Persia. Let's push them. Oh my god, can we can we do this? Can we actually push into Russia right now? I'm also waiting now for the Gallipoli campaign because it just hasn't happened yet. And the change that I want to make does occur after Gallipoli. So I was sort of waiting for it. Also, the borders in Austria-Hungary, Russia are just disgusting. Just don't look at that. D don't even go near it. It's gross. Don't look at it. I've only just realized this focus as well. Look at this Islamic army. Tons of bonuses against major countries. Let's freaking go. That's amazing. Oh my god, I hadn't even noticed my push against Russia has worked. I've encircled some divisions and we're pushing in. Oh man, this is going okay, actually. And we're really starting to get on now. It is 1916 and there's still been no Gallipoli. I don't know what Britain's doing. So I will just make the change now in 1916, which is that the Ottoman army realized that they need further long range artillery support for their infantry divisions, especially after Gallipoli where they were doing a lot of firing down on the British positions. So what they ended up doing is adding more howitzers per division and replacing some of the regular field artillery with these bigger howitzers. This is really tough to approximate because I have no real specific sources for the quantities, but I'm trying to keep it pretty low in number, around 16 to 30 pieces of artillery. So what I've done is I've added one howitzer battalion and taken away the support artillery. So now there's no artillery in the divisions and it's just howitzers. I think this is relatively accurate. Stats are still not very good. But you know what? It's better than we were doing before. We also have an insanely good bonus here from the Schlendorf plan, which is where the Germans basically ask the Ottomans, hey, can you just attack Russia more? And we get 15% attack and speed and reduction of attrition into Russia and the Caucasus. Isn't that crazy? Let's just hit it. It lasts for two years anyway. I'm sure nothing bad will happen in two years, right? And look at this. This is just fantastic. We are pushing so heavy. What? Senusia. Look at Senusia. They've just won? I guess they had forces of their own. They've actually pushed back against Italy and they're holding against Britain. Let's send some camel boys over there to try and help out. Like, and we're doing really well on the Russian front as well. The Caucasus are just collapsing. The Russians just do not have forces able to contend with me. I don't want to overextend though because I don't have a ton of divisions. I'm going to start some of the assaults and bring some cavalry up to try to take open bits and maybe do some encirclements. The Russians are collapsing on the Eastern Front against Germany and Austria which means that probably most of their forces are there. So we're just going to completely encircle the southern Caucasus front of the Russians. Just keep pushing. This is going really well. We are contributing, guys, okay? We are a valuable member of the Central Powers. Let's try to take Sinai as well. I want that Egypt. Give me that canal. Oh, and there's Romania. Yes, this always catches me by surprise, but Romania has joined, so we're going to get some forces over there, pull them off the Russian front probably, just to try and hold on to that. And the state of Thessaloniki has also been proclaimed. This means that there will be beginning to be a little bit of a Greek problem against our borders. Bulgaria can probably deal with that, I'm sure. Okay, yeah, Romania is just absolutely collapsing. <laughs> They're failing totally. Poor Romania. Oh my god, the Sinai push is going really well. We've managed to almost reach the canal and we've pushed some boys to the desert. We, we might be getting pushed back a little bit towards the borders, but that's okay. That's totally fine. Doesn't matter though, because we're pushing deeply into Russia. We're well into Ukraine. We are helping here. And the Caucasus are ours. Still constantly buying equipment from Germany, of course. But come on, look at this. We've also almost completely done our doctrines, but the last one of the doctrines is combined arms, and this actually removes the entrenchment bonuses you gain and just gives you like a bit of breakthrough and some speed. So I really don't want to do this until I have tons of XP to go down like Grand Battle Plan Doctrine. So I'll just ignore this for now. Oh, and there it is. The Arab Revolt. Damn you, Lords of Arabia. Why are you doing this to me? So we can actually release and play as Hejaz and Asir, but I'm not going to do that. Obviously, we're going to just be trying to fight them as best we can. This actually isn't as bad as you think it would be. It's just basically a couple pop-out states. And it does mean that we do get some divisions encircled in the south, which isn't great, but I'm just going to quickly move as many boys as I can to try and rectify this and hope the Brits don't absolutely push me back and destroy me. Ooh, Emir Faisal, you know, the character in Lands of Arabia is asking us to release the Syrian kingdom. This doesn't feel right. Uh, I can form the Syrian kingdom as a vassal and everyone pieces out and is chill and they get a giant bunch of territory or we can restore order ourselves. This feels wrong. Um, this feels like this should event be given to the British, right? After the British had pushed all the way up by 
almost early mid 1917 then Faisal wanted to create a Syrian kingdom and Britain was like uh, no he don't get to do that so I think this is not correct that we should have this but regardless we're gonna say no screw you Faisal we're in charge also just polishing off Hejaz and the breakaway states in the south this is going just fine we're doing good. We're getting lend leads from the Germans. Senussi is somehow still alive. No idea. And it's the January Revolution. So Russia is on the fast train to destruction. We will push a little bit more in there to just kind of speed it up a bit and hold more against the Greeks. Our boys are doing honestly just fine. Considering we still have quite a lot of malices, we're doing pretty okay. Since it's now 1917, I will do my final change for divisions, which is to add a little bit of stormtrooper sections. I have found very little evidence for specific Ottoman stormtroopers existing in the entirety of the army. Instead, I've only really found them as being part of the Yildirim army group boys on the Sinai front. So I will be adding a stormtrooper section to that, but to nowhere else. These guys represent, you know, the early submachine guns and some shotguns and boys designed to just charge into trenches to clear the way. Very cool, but we're not going to be giving it to everybody. Fun fact, well, the source I have for this specifies that the first Stormtrooper section, when they recruited them, they were too old and too barefoot, which I think is very funny. We have been pushed back in Sinai a little bit. The Brits are really committing to us. I also have not been clicking army modernization anywhere near as much as I should have been. So my boys are still a little weak. We're going to build up a little bit of a new fort line as we attempt to hold. But the Russians are just collapsing. Like, they're, they're donezo. They are very soon going to explode, though I really hate this horrible Kiev salient. It's like the curse pocket, but much more gross. I hate it. We're also pushing into Tunisia with some of our camel boys and Senusia, and I think we now have enough XP as well to go grand battle plan. So we're going to get all those beautiful doctrines and just go right down. We're going to become so freaking strong. That's going to be amazing. Oh, for God's sake, Ottomans, please stop changing your government. I beg you. And all of a sudden, Tunisia has just wrecked my boys in Triple Tanya, and we've been pushed right back, so I guess Senusia is donezo. But it doesn't matter because very shortly- yeah, there it is, yeah. Oh, bye-bye. Russia has collapsed in the Bolshevik coup, and there's the, the Treaty of Betum, which kind of ends the fighting in the Caucasus. So I think we're good. We can just move our forces- what? Oh, no, the Islamic army of the Caucasus. And now there's a bunch of angry people south of Azerbaijan. No! Oh, for God's sake. It's okay. I can destroy the Assyrian volunteers by moving my armies back. There we go. We instantly defeat them. But that was really scary. <laughs> I didn't have any troops immediately on the border. The borders are getting really gross along the Soviet line. And the influenza pandemic has hit. This is really bad for us because obviously it's bad for everybody. But our stats are so bad from all the little malices we have that that's going to make us even worse. But the Austrians have helped us in Greece, which is great. And we're pushing right towards Athens. So it shouldn't be too bad. We're kind of just waiting for Germany to get the Ludendorff offensive. There it is. Okay. This is, they have a little bit of time with tons of offensive bonuses to make one last ditch effort to take Paris. And if they fail, oh boy, we basically lose. And I don't think I can help. I'm going to send some reserve forces to try to help them out a little bit if they get too far pushed back. But it feels wrong of me to try to win the war by sending Ottomans to France because historically there were none. So we're just going to send some boys to help out. And most of our forces will be focused on killing the French in Greece. Because look at this. There's like 40 divisions here. We're wiping them. And the Germans are actually getting very, very close to Paris. It is not impossible they could win here. And we've just done a huge pocket of the French. And we got like 700,000 casualties. We have contributed. No matter what happens, okay? Don't anyone say differently. We've helped. Oh god, our Sultan has died. I don't think that really is going to change much. Except for another political change. Oh, okay, what the hell? Austria-Hungary has just collapsed and broken into a bunch of different countries, and the Yugoslavia bit is attacking me, and Greece has gotten really strong again, so all of my forces that I had in France and elsewhere, they need to come back. I need- I have to abandon Germany, I'm sorry. I gotta defend my own borders here. I've got encircled in southern Greece. Oh, I had like 14 divisions there. How could this have happened? There's so many losses. Germany now has the farm crisis. The Ludendorff offensive is over. Collapse of Austria-Hungary, and there it is. Entente victorious. Basically, if Germany doesn't win on the Ludendorff Offensive, they automatically surrender. And I did have the option to say I refuse to surrender, but I'm going to stick to historicity here and we're just going to kind of collapse. It's There's no way we could win against the entirety of the United Entente. But that's it. Peace treaty is going to happen. We've lost 
so much for some reason. Oh, it's terrible. We've lost all of our war economy. Arab Syria has in fact popped out under Faisal, so it would appear that the event was given again to Britain and it's instantly made them. We've lost basically everything and we got the fall of our domain event, making us lose cores and claims and anything outside of Anatolia. We are now just Anatolia and a teeny little bit of Constantinople. This is just awful. And what on earth is this? We are Dominion. Why are we a Dominion? We're technically like a puppet of Britain now. Is this what happened historically? What is going on? Our parliament's been forcibly disbanded and the Paris Peace Conference has fu- What? What is this? Britain has taken Constantinople. Greece has taken bits of Anatolia. Italy has stolen things. France has taken things all the way up into Anatolia. My God. This is terrible. <laughs> I should have refused to surrender. But we're basically wrecked. This is uh, just making me garbage. Historically, what happened here is the Ottomans reformed into Turkey, gradually reclaimed the territories that were taken by the Entente through diplomatic pacts, and eventually we did fight Greece in the Greco-Turkish War, which actually started because Greece was promised land by the Western Allies, but didn't really get any. So they attacked us, but the Turks actually win, meaning we get the kind of World War II Turkish borders by the end of it. But that's it. We have survived, quote unquote, as the Ottoman Empire against the Entente. I could have tried to refuse surrender, but I don't think it would have gone very well at all. And uh, yeah, we're done so. <laughs> we are the weakest state ever. This is truly terrible. If we thought we started badly, we ended much worse. Thank you very much for watching. Do be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the video and any other suggestions you have as well should go into the comments. And thank you again to World of Tanks for sponsoring this video. Make sure you register using my link down below and invite code COMBAT to get a whole bunch of goodies. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye